Welcome to a lesson on functions and function notation. Now, a function you can almost think of as, as a type of machine that takes an input and spits out an output. But it's, it's more than just that, because just having inputs and outputs would define just a relationship. A function is a very specific type of relationship, one where it's a type of relationship where each input is unique, uniquely determines one output value. Now that means for each input, there is exactly one output that comes out of it. Um, so you put in the same input, you're going to get the same output every single time. So it's this predictable machine. You can almost think of this thing like a vending machine. If you go to a vending machine and you press the button for Snickers, you're expecting to get Snickers out. If something else were to come out, that'd be a pretty weird machine. So, so imagine this machine here. Uh, we feed a 3 into the function, it does some kind of either calculations or lookup or something, and it spits out a 4. Right, so there, imagine that machine. Now suppose that we had, we fed a 3 into the machine again. What would you expect to get out? So what we would expect to get out is 4. Right? If we put the same input in, we would expect to get exactly the same output out. Um, th that makes this a predictable machine. We would get nothing out except for 4. Now, think instead. Suppose that I don't know what got fed into the machine, but all I could do was observe the output. So I saw that a 4 came out of the machine. What, what can you say about the input? So all we can conclude about the input is that it was maybe a 3. But we don't know for certain, because there could be some other input that also gives the output of 4. We don't know for certain that the only input that gives 4 uh, is, is 3. It's kind of like going back to that vending machine. There might be more than one button that gives you a Snickers, so you don't know which button was pressed just by seeing that a Snickers came out of it. So here are a couple different uh, possible function machines. Now these are a little odd here because we're going to be talking about inputs and outputs that are not numerical necessarily. So imagine that we had student ID numbers and that student's 11 a.m. class. Um, so here's two possibilities. Either, either machine A, that, that you feed in a student ID number and it tells you that student's 11 a.m. class. Or, or machine B, where you put in an 11 a.m. class and it tells you the student's ID number. So, so which of these, or maybe both of them, are functions? So it turns out that this one is indeed a function because these student ID numbers should be unique. So for any student ID number, we should know what the student's 11 a.m. class is. If we put in a student ID number, again, we're going to get the same output out the second time. This one is not a function because if we put in 141 as the input, math 141 as the input, we're probably going to get a whole bunch of different outputs, not just one unique output. Because uh, there's probably a whole bunch of students all taking math 141 at 11. So this one is not a function, only this first one. So when we talk about functions, uh, we can think of uh, them in a variety of ways. Uh, these are sort of mul the multiple representations of functions. So first off is, is words, where we use words to describe a function. A and that would be like that previous example where we were talking about um, the student's 11 a.m. class. Another would be a table of values. So this is where you have a table of input and output values uh, for uh, representing the function. So usually, the, like, the, these would be the inputs, these would be the outputs, and the function would be defined by, or at least partially described by, that table of values. A graph will, t will put inputs, usually along the horizontal, and outputs along the vertical, and some sort of graphical representation of the relationship between the inputs and the outputs. And then lastly is formulas. These are the things that you probably think of when you think about algebra. It's things like, you know, x squared plus 3 and square root of x and things like that. So 
to really talk about functions, we're going to need to get this idea of, of function notation. So when we talk about functions, we talk about the output being a function of the input. But if we're going to talk about that, if we, every time when we talked about a function, we had to say output is a function of the input, that would be really tedious. So usually we introduce names and variables to represent these things. So for example, we might call the output y, and we might call the input x. And we don't have to, we could use h and t or, or p and q, it doesn't really matter. And, and we're going to name our function as well. Um, for now, we're going to call our function f, but again, we could name our function anything. We could call it h, we could call it g, we could call it Fred, we could call it Bob. Um, it doesn't matter what we call it. So we can abbreviate this output as a function of input to just y is f of x. And symbolically, this is how we write that. We write y equals f of x. And now this is really, really important. Uh, this is different than your, your, your what you're used to before, where, you know, parentheses meant multiplication. This is not multiplication, okay? This is not multiplication. This is function evaluation. This is read as y is f of x, not f times x. This is f of x. So this is simply a notation. It's a way of saying, I have a function f, its input is x, its output is y. So imagine, for example, we had a function c of p that gives the cost of grooming a poodle weighing p pounds. Uh, so this is sort of describing what the function is, is in words. So how could we interpret, what would c of 20 equals 30 mean in terms of the original context? So when we look at this, we see that p here is the input, and so in this case, the 20 is our input as well, which means it is a value for p, and p is representing pounds. Uh, the 30 is the result of the function, the output, and the function gives the cost, and so this is my output, this is the cost. So this statement is telling me that the cost of grooming a poodle that weighs 20 pounds, so the 20 is my input, it is pounds, so the cost of that grooming that 20 pound poodle will be 30, 30 dollars. So with a, with a function, there's two things that we typically do. The first is we evaluate, and when we evaluate a function, we're given an input and we're trying to find the corresponding output. This is usually a fairly easy thing to do uh, for most functions. The second thing we might do is solve. So given an output, we might try to find the input or inputs that correspond with uh, that output. So evaluating, we know the input. Solving, we know the output. So quick question for you. When we evaluate, how many results can we get? And when we solve, how many results can we get? So when we evaluate, we can get one result, or possibly none if we put in an input where the function is not defined. Uh, that's because in order to be a function, each input has to give us exactly one output, and so that's a necessity. Now when we solve, we could get one or more outputs out of the fun or inputs that give us the same output. Remember that for a function, there might be more than one input that give us the same outputs. The function de definition doesn't restrict that. So we could get more than one solutions when we solve. So for example, imagine f is a function that takes a holiday and give, gives what month it's in. So if we were to evaluate f of Halloween, so Halloween is the holiday, the function gives the month, f of Halloween is, is October. And I'm sure you can see that, that, that you know, there's no way that we can have more than one um, result there. But if we solve f of h equals November, then, then there's a bunch of possible answers. We could say, well, there's, you know, Thanksgiving and there's uh, Veterans Day. Sorry about that. Uh, 
And, and so there's a bunch of possibilities there. So now there is a special type of function called a one-to-one -one function. And this is one where the relation, uh, it's a type of relationship where each input corresponds to exactly one output and each output corresponds to exactly one input. So with a one-to-one -one function, uh, one input gives one output, one output also gives one, corresponds with one input. And so you don't have that multiple solution situation. So now let's look at some tables. So here are three tables. Which of these represent a function? And which of these represent one-to-one -one functions? So I if in order to be a function, each input has to give a unique output. So here, if I put in 2, I get 4. If I put in 4, I get 7. If I put in 6, I get 4. This one is just fine. It is a function. Here, if I put in 2, I get 7. If I put in 4, I get 5. If I put 4, I get 4. That doesn't work. Here, I have two inputs, both giving me giving me different outputs, and so this is not a function. Uh, and then this one, if I put in 2, I get 7, 4, I get 5, put in 6, I get 4. Yep, that is indeed a function. But how about 1 to 1? Uh, so here, 4 corresponds with, sorry, an input of 2 corresponds with an output of 4, a course output of 4 corresponds with 2, but an output of 4 also corresponds with 6. And so here, one output is corresponding with multiple inputs, and so this one is not one to one. Uh, this one's not a function, so it automatically is not one to one. This one, however, each input corresponds to one output. Each output corresponds to one input, and so this one is one to one. So continuing talking about tables here, we can, t we can represent a function with a table. So imagine we have this table, and we let y equal f of x. Now this tells us that x is going to be our input, and y is going to be our output. So based on that, evaluate f of 4, and solve f of x equals 4. So to evaluate f of 4, we know that 4 is our input value, and in this case, our input is our x value. So we're going to come find 4 in our inputs and figure out what the corresponding output is. So f of 4 is going to be 7. To solve f of x equals 4, we know that 4 is the output value, or in other words, the y value, and we want to find x. So we go look for 4's in the y value, and look for the corresponding x values. And notice that in this case, there's going to be two different solutions. Either x is 2 or x is 6. Both of them satisfy this equation. In other words, if I were to plug these in for x, I would get 4 out of this function. So now let's talk a little bit about graphs. So when we talk about graphs, uh, when we talk about functions, typically we talk about the input being along the horizontal axis and the, and the output being along the vertical axis. And so if we have a point like that one there, that tells me that an input of 1 corresponds with an output of 3. Or in other words, if I was to write that as a function, an input of 1 gives me an output of 3. So thinking about that relationship between inputs and outputs and what it means to be a function, which of these graphs represents a function? And which ones represent a one-to-one -one function? So in order to be a function, each input has to give us an output. And so we could imagine picking an input here. Like if I pick an input of 2 and a half, it's going to give me an output of, uh, you know, around 2 and a half as well. If I pick an input of 1, it's going to give me an output of negative 2. And you can probably see here that for any input, yeah, yeah, da, da, I'm going to get exactly one output. Sometimes we talk about what's called the vertical line test, which says, imagine picking any input and drawing a vertical line. So these are all the possible outputs corresponding with that input. If this vertical line only cro crosses the graph once, 
then there's one output corresponding, and it would be a function. And so this one is indeed a function, and you can see the same thing here. For any input, there's exactly one output, so this is a function. But here, if I were to pick an input of 2, I'm going to get two different outputs corresponding to it, and so this is not a function. What about 1 to 1? So again, 1 to 1 says each input has one output, each output has one input. Here, if I pick an output of 1, you can see that there are two different inputs corresponding, and so this is not 1 to 1. But over here, each input gives one output, each output corresponds to exactly one input, and so this is one-to-one. -one. So let's now try doing an evaluate and solve using a graph. So here's a graph. Um, this is a graph of h of t, and remember that means that our t's are along the horizontal, and our outputs are along the vertical. And go ahead and try evaluating h of 1, and solving h of t equals 1. So to evaluate h of 1, this says that my input, my t value is 1. So I find an input of 1, and the graph will tell me that the corresponding output, when the input is 1, the corresponding output on the graph is 3. Here, the 1 is representing our output, so we go find an output of 1 on the graph. And notice that there are three points that all have an output of 1. And so the solutions are going to be the input values of all those points. So an input of negative 4 will give me 1, an input of negative 2 will give me 1, an input of 0 will give me 1. So we have three different solutions uh, to this, to this equation. So, let's, uh, the, the last sort of representation of functions we're going to talk about is formulas, and these probably look, this probably looks more familiar to you. Now, in, in algebra, we would often write y equals 3x squared minus 4x plus 1, and really, this is meaning the same thing. It, it just, we're writing f of x instead of, instead of y, because we're, now we're saying, here's a function my function's input is x, and uh, here's what that means. Here's how you calculate with that input. Now, you can almost think of this as the x being the thing that's going in, and here's what I do with it. And so you can almost think of this function like f of something is 3 times something squared minus 4 times something plus 1, and whatever we put in here replaces the x in the equation. Now, th there's a lot of, I mean, we could write all other different kinds of formulas. We could use a different variable for the input. We could have more complicated functions. We could have names that are longer than just one letter. Again, we could write a function called Fred if we wanted to. Uh, and all of these are, are function notation representations of formulas. So, so let's give this a try. So here's a formula, a function defined by a formula. Try evaluating g of negative 2 and solving g of k equals 4. So to evaluate g of negative 2, again, remember that idea that whatever's inside my parentheses, whatever's taking the value of k, this is k, it's going to get substituted in for k in the, in the formula. Um, and you really should think of this as, as if k equals negative 2 and you're evaluating the formula. So g of negative 2 would be 3 times, and, and we're, s we're cubing k, so we need to cube all of negative 2. So we're going to put it in parentheses to make sure that we do that. Now, negative 2 cubed is negative 8. Negative 8 times 3 is negative 24, and so we end up with negative 23 as our result. So g of negative 2 is negative 23. Now, just to draw a connection here, if we were to create a table of values for this function, that means that negative 2, negative 23 would be in that table. 
It also means that if we were going to create a graph of this function, that the point negative 2, negative 23 would be on the graph of that function. Okay, so now solving g of k equals 4, so this says that the result of my function is 4. So that is this, that's the result of the function. And so we'll just say g of k is 3k plus 1, and we want g of k to equal 4. And now we just solve this algebraic equation. So we can subtract 1 from both sides and divide by 3 and take the cubed root, and the cubed root of 1 is 1. And so this, this particular equation has one solution, k equals 1. Now, there's, we're going to be talking this entire class about functions, but there are some basic functions which are really good to sort of just get familiar with, and these are called the toolkit functions, and you can find these in the book uh, to, to look more carefully at them. The first is called the constant function, and it's called that because it is constant. It, it, it's defined by something like f of x equals 2 or 3 or some other number. This says no matter what the input is, the output is 2, and so the graph of that is just a horizontal line. The identity function is this one. It takes the in, whatever is the input, it gives it back as the output. It's the most basic linear function or, or line. The absolute value function looks like this. This is the function that gives the absolute value of the input. Then we have a set of, of power functions. We have the quadratic, x squared, which has a shape like this, and the cubic, which has a shape like this, uh, and the square root function, like this. Um, and again, this, it's good to have an idea of what shape corresponds with what kind of function. And so you're going to want to look at these and get really learn and memorize the basic shapes, the names, and the functions that correspond with them. And lastly, we have the cube root function, which is kind of like that square root, um, and then the two reciprocal functions, the reciprocal function and the reciprocal squared, uh, which are kind of unique because they have this big break when x equals 0. All right, and so that ends this first lesson on functions and function notation.